It has been two weeks following the Kenyatta National Hospital incident where a two-year-old boy by the name Travis Miner lost his life after Fork Jembe was lodged in his skull. Since then, the family has been seeking answers from the National Hospital on what exactly transpired on the 11th of this month before the child was declared dead. Today, the mother Judy Muthoni and a handful of members of the family appeared before the Senate's Health Committee, wanting the senators to aid in their quest to seek justice for their loved one. Pain, anguish and despair defined Judy's plea to the senators as she narrated her son's journey and seeking medical attention after Fok Jembe was lodged in his head at their Kiambu home before taking him to Kenyatta where he breathed his last. Lakini hizo majebe zilikuwa kwa nyumba sasa vile wao watoto walitoa ya yeah, kujua hiyo. Ndio hiyo wakati mimi nilikuwa kazi nilipigwa kitu saa tisa hapo akaniambia ati wako medical According to Judith, doctors at the Thika Base Hospital said they could not attend to baby Travis and they referred him to Kenyatta National Hospital. At the National Hospital, Modoni's family not only waited for hours for the baby to be admitted, but they claim they were also subjected to harsh treatment. <laughs> the committee's chair, Senator Jackson Mandago, said that they will pursue all medics and hospitals who attended to baby Travis. Mulipo fika saa kumna mbili, alikuwa attended to saa nene ya usiku. Na hiyo saa nene ya usiku, mpaka asubui, unasema walifunga. Lakini kulikuwa na painkiller ama nini ya kuweza kumpunguza uchungu wa mtoto. Kuna shindano ama kitu chochote walimpatia ama walimfunga. Ile wakati tulifika hapo shindano tu aliyowekewa hiyo maji ya kuweka na shindano. Kuna kitu kingine. Yale mambo yaliendelea mpaka tukapata uh, tukaweza kumpoteza mtoto huyu. Sisi kama kamati uh, ya bunge la seneti tunasema wafanyakazi wa afya ama wafanyakazi wote wa serikali wanafaa kuwajibika wakati wanatimiza kazi ambazo wamepewa na serikali na kwa hivyo kama bunge kamati sisi tunataka kuchunguza this comes as the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union KMPDU maintain that the lack of enough medical practitioners employed in numerous hospitals and the case of Travis could have been avoided if a neurosurgeon was available at the Thika Level 5 hospital to treat the two-year-old. The painful death of this boy, is, uh, as his mother watched, is yet again a reminder of some of the previous deaths which have caused uproar in the country that Kenyans probably seem to have forgotten. On Monday, 7th December 2020, a vibrant 28-year-old Dr. Stephen Mogosu died under similar circumstances, having contracted COVID-19 from the ward he was working. A nascent medical career nipped in the bud. Furthermore, his salary was unpaid for the period up to the point of his demise. Many other preventable deaths have occurred in our health facilities and mainly as a result of weakness in our healthcare system. For instance, lack of ICU facilities, absence of appropriate health products such as oxygen or blood, and also lack of the right mix of skilled personnel. Mandago said the committee will meet the Thika Level 5 Hospital leadership, Kiambu Health Ministry, and also KNH to conduct investigations. Mamba ambayo mtatupatia itaweza kutusaidia sisi kama kamati kwa sababu baadaye pia tutaalika wasimamisi wa hospitali yetu ya Rufaa 
ya Kenyatta na pia tutawalika pia wasimamizi wa hospitali wathika ili tuweze kujua ni nani yako kwenye kazi ambao wanahitajika kuwajibika